At the end of the crown stage, the enamel is completely formed. It is covered by the reduced enamel epithelium that protects the enamel of the dental follicle. All this lodged within the bone crypt. The root's formation starts with the proliferation of the epithelial cells of the cervical loop, located in the region of the cervical margin of the crown. This creates an epithelial sheath, which bends inwards to form Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. Hertwig's epithelial root sheath is a bilayered cellular structure composed of an inner epithelial layer facing the dental papilla and an outer epithelial layer facing the dental follicle. The apical bent portion of the sheath is named epithelial diaphragm. Its role is to induce the radicular dentinogenesis. For this to happen, the diaphragm sends induction messages to the ectomesenchymal cells of the apical papilla. These messages induce the differentiation of the ectomesenchymal cells into odontoblasts. The newly formed root odontoblasts then secrete the radicular mantle dentin in contact with the inner cells of Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. Along the dentin matrix thus formed, the cells of the outer epithelial layer disintegrate, leaving only the inner epithelial layer. The cells of this sheath then synthesize and secrete enamel-related proteins before detaching from the root surface. The mantle dentin and enamel-related proteins come thus directly in contact with the dental follicle, inducing the primary cementogenesis. For this purpose, cells of the dental follicle react to these induction signals and differentiate either into fibroblastic cells that migrate towards the root surface with a perpendicular orientation or into cementoblasts placed parallel to the surface of the tooth. Then, the fibroblastic cells secrete the extrinsic fibres and the cementoblasts secrete the intrinsic fibres of the primary cementum. And that is how the dentin and the primary cementum of the root are formed. Thank you.